11, 3, 2, 1, from Appleton, Wisconsin. It's Foul Photo. All right. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to make your pictures better. It's super simple. It's something you can do when you're out in the field and it's gonna increase the production value of your pictures tenfold. So how are you gonna do that? Stick around. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to make your pictures better. And we're gonna do that by using my buddy Kevin Stevens pictures. He does this one simple thing in a ton of his photos. It separates him as a photographer from a lot of others out there. So pay attention to this tip. Now, I spoke to Kevin. I asked him if I could use his pictures. He said, go ahead. And the one thing I confirmed was his lens choice. Now he does use a 70 to 200, but you can use some of these same principles in whatever lens you're using and what ever scenario you're in but we're going to be specifically talking about waterfowl hunting today because his pictures really apply to that field so let's dive in let's take a look at kevin's first picture here so as you can see this is a picture of a dog um, carrying a mallard back and there's mallards maybe even mojos um, in the foreground i can't tell if those are mojos or not anyhow so the one so one of the big tips for today or the big tip today is going to be using decoys or inanimate objects to create a framing for your photo so as you can see in this first picture kevin does a great job by actually using the duck's neck as the frame and really pushing your eye to where the dog is it's fantastic second picture is a picture of uh, good old connor and he uses a pile of decoys as the base, the foreground of the picture, and the subject is Connor. So it really pushes your eyes to Connor. The third picture we're gonna look at is of a gentleman waving a goose flag. And in this picture, you don't have to be used, you don't necessarily have to use decoys like we showed you in the last two pictures, but you can use anything um, to really have a good foreground and then your subject in the background of that. And what this does for you is it creates kind of that blurred effect. So to get a really good blurred effect, you want you need stuff in the foreground and you need stuff in the background. So you can see in this photo, it's textbook, right? You've got uh, the grass in the foreground leading you in your eyes to seeing the subject and then a little bit in the background. This is fantastic. So the, the fourth picture here we're gonna look at is a guy standing in the background is a dog carrying a goose. Another fantastic use of a person as not the subject, but as a way to direct your eye and frame the subject that you're actually using. And then of course the last picture, it's a, it's a gentleman sitting down with a shotgun and the dog looking at him. So my big tip of the day is when you're out shooting, if you wanna create a lot more interest in your photos, it's to really have something in the foreground, right? So something that is in front of your subject but not completely blocking your subject. And you want people to be able to at least have an idea of what it is. Now sometimes that's not important, but as you can see what, you, what Kevin did here, um, you can still kind of tell what that foreground is, but having the uh, focus on the subject that blurs that out and really creates a nice frame around it. So that's my quick tip of the week. Um, get out there, take photos, get practicing for waterfowl and hunting seasons. And remember, um, frame your subject with other hunting related items. Chick, chick, check the Chinese chicken. Did it, 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 did